Well, people said they wanted to see my actual walls in the background. There you go, it's here. So, before we really get started, it's time for a history lesson. Sh shut up, it's my channel, I can do what I want. So one of the f most famous and most long-lasting royal dynasties in the history of Europe was the Habsburgs. Uh, they ruled for almost 800 years in total, and over that time period, at one point or another, they held domain over parts of Austria, Switzerland, the Holy Roman Empire, that is Germany, Hungary, Croatia, Spain, Portugal, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Czechia, Ukraine, and other places, including their overseas colonies. Like, while they ruled Spain and Portugal, their colonial empires looked like this. They were absolutely gigantic. In fact, the Philippines, the country of 100 million people, is named after King Philip II of Spain, who was himself a member of the Habsburg dynasty. Now, the Habsburgs are generally thought of as being Austrian, since that was the seat of their power for most of their history, but they're actually originally from Switzerland. But, you know, Whatever, that's not important. Again, these guys were everywhere and they were super powerful. Like, at one point, one of them tried to make himself Emperor of Mexico in 1864. Like, yes, uh, Americans get obnoxiously drunk on Cinco de Mayo because the Mexicans threw out Maximilian Habsburg. Fun fact, Maximilian's older brother was Franz Joseph, who was Emperor of Austria-Hungary, and the guy who started World War I, <laughs> because statistically speaking, 100% of world wars have been started by Austrians. <laughs> Another fun fact, Franz Joseph was a leg of the love triangle in the terrible fantasy trilogy, Blood Rose Rebellion. <laughs> and the other leg of that love triangle, the one that Franz Joseph lost to, was a Romani guy, and I feel like the real Franz Joseph would be very upset if he knew that, <laughs> but number one, he's dead. Number two, again, he started World War I, fuck him. This is now my second video in a row where I have referenced Hitler and referenced how awful Romani people have been treated in Austria over the course of its history. Fuck off, Hitler. <laughs> this is also the second video in a row where I have referenced Blood Rose Rebellion, and I don't know what I'm doing with my life. The point is, as I was saying, the Habsburgs were one of the most powerful dynasties in European history. The last country that they ruled was Austria-Hungary, and after World War I, that empire not only got dissolved and split into multiple different countries, but their monarchy was overthrown. So the Habsburgs were thrown from power, and now they don't rule anywhere. Now, most of Europe's royal dynasties aren't around anymore, or rather, they're around, but nowadays they're just rich guys who have weird ancestry. Because, you know, even after they were overthrown or deposed or whatever, they still owned, like, a lot of property and stuff all over the place and passed that on to to their descendants, so, you know, they're still weirdly rich, you know, people are still around. People like the Romanovs, the Hohenzollerns, the Savoys, the Rabones, the Bonapartes, and yes, the Habsburgs. Like, these guys are all still around. And that leads me to a guy named Edward Habsburg, or full name Edward Habsburg Lothringen. See, he is a descendant of the dynasty, and he is also a member of the Hungarian government. Like, again, he, it's not a monarchy nowadays, he didn't inherit his position, but he is the ambassador from Hungary to Vatican City. Even if he's not royalty, he is a real politician, and the fact that he's a Hungarian politician might explain why he's kind of butthurt about the Treaty of Trianon. <laughs> like, oh my god, it's been a hundred years. Hungarians, get the fuck over yourselves. He also loves Neon Genesis Evangelion a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, a little too much, if I'm being honest. But you know what? That's not the important part. The important part is that he is also a published author. Yes, today we're here to talk about a children's book called Dubby the Double-Headed Eagle, and it was written by Edward Habsburg Lothringen. Now, some of you are already face-palming. For the rest, um, the double-headed eagle is the symbol of the Habsburg family. Here's some examples of how it looks that you may have seen over the years. Now, in the story, Dubby is an eagle, and he's born to a regular eagle mother and father, but he has two heads, and the two heads have different personalities, but they're only ever, they don't have different names. They're just referred to as the first head and the second head, and the first head is the brave one, and the second head is the whiny pussy. So Dubby, deciding he doesn't fit in at home, decides to go on a journey to find his real family, and along the way he's hindered by two villains. We'll talk about them more later, because once you, once you understand the villains, the, the whole book just becomes a lot funnier, and the, the message behind it sort of 
clicks right into place. So the book is trying to be a sort of Roald Dahl-esque fairy tale, you know, something like The Witches or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or Matilda. It's definitely going for that sort of vibe. So it doesn't concern itself with real-world logic, at least sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes it does. And if you just look at it as a kid's book, like, set aside the symbolism and the backstory of it and everything, I think it's fine? Yeah, I, I don't have strong opinions on it, so it's not great. I would recommend that kids read, you know, stuff by Roald Dahl way, way before they read this, but, I mean, it's fine. But once you do understand the symbolism and everything, the book does become a lot funnier, and in a weird way, I think it's more enjoyable. So, the story here is very simple. We'll, we'll run through it in just a couple of minutes. Dubby is born, his parents and his siblings go, you have two heads, that's so weird. One of his brothers tells him to stop grinning so foolishly, like I... B how, birds have beaks, how can they smile? They, they can uh, okay. And Dubby tries learning to fly, and his first head is all for it, but his second head is a pussy, so he's not able to fly, and he has to walk around. And after, like, three or four pages of the beginning of the book, where Dubby just feels out of place, he talks to an owl named Owlalia, <laughs> who tells him that the city of Vienna is nearby, and there are tons of double-headed eagles all over the place there. So we have a double-headed eagle named Dubby, and an owl named Owlalia, I must tell you, the imagination that Edward puts into character names beggars belief. <laughs> Clearly the Habsburgs are blessed with imagination and creativity far beyond us mere mortals. So Dubby listens to Owlalia, decides to go to Vienna, so he climbs down the mountain, remember he can't fly, and he just goes to a nearby train station. And two men are watching him go down the mountain. They're named Mr. Pospisil and Mr. Washlapsky. I hope I'm pronouncing those right. But don't worry, I will get to them later. <laughs> they want to capture Dubby for some nefarious purpose we don't know yet. Uh, and if it wasn't a children's fairy tale, I would question how they knew that a double-headed eagle had been born already. Like, Dubby hasn't gone anywhere, he's just been at the nest. But somehow they found out. Whatever. Again, it's a children's fairy tale. Don't think about it too hard. So the two men drive to Dubby when he reaches the bottom of the mountain. And they try to get him to get in their car, and he doesn't. And now, I should mention that this book has a bunch of illustrations in it. My personal favorite is this one. <laughs> just, just look at it for a moment, please. I can't explain why, it's just so goddamn funny to me. Like, it's, the, the two men are drawn so creepy and inhuman, and they're trying to get a young child into their car. <laughs> it just, it just made me laugh. So Dubby hops on a train without paying, and he runs into a young girl named Emma. And Emma says she's going to Vienna to visit her aunt, but it's really obvious she's lying about something. And she looks up double-headed eagles on her smartphone, so I guess this takes place in the modern day, and exposits about the symbolism of double-headed eagles for a bit. Yes, she replied, reading from a webpage. The first time you appeared was on the Imperial Coat of Arms in 1433. After that, you were the official animal on the Coat of Arms for the Imperial Habsburg family of Austria. Consequently, Vienna is the city with the most images of double eagles. Oh, for fuck's sake. So when they arrive in Vienna, they avoid Washlapsky and Pospisil again. Uh, they wander around for a bit, and they are just looking at the eagles and trying to find out, like, okay, where's Dubby's family? Surely he must have a family out here somewhere. There were sketched eagles on houses, on pillars, chiseled ones, and a lot of them had their shield with the coat of arms hanging around their necks. I quite like the three white birds on the coat of arms, the ones with the red stripe, said one head cheerfully. Well, I, began the other, a bit put off because he didn't like the white birds. Okay, fucking racist. Uh, really, they just wander around more and more. That's like a huge chunk of this book, if I'm being honest. Like, uh, they have a museum tour guide who waxes about the symbolism and the history of double eagles for a while, but he denies they're real, etc. Like, that, this really is a big chunk of the book. And meanwhile, Pospisil and Washlapsky are called back to their headquarters by their boss. He's a really fat guy whose name is, and I swear to God, I'm not making this up, his name is Herr Hofrat Turbulent, translated to Mr. Court Counselor Turbulent. I, I kind of want to use the I know writers who use subtext clip, but I, I don't know if it really applies here. Mr. Court Counselor Turbulent has a desk with the letters SQ on the front, which is confirmed later to literally stand for status quo. 
the villains here are the status quo. Do you get it? <laughs> so, I, I, again, I, I want to use the clip. I just, I don't know if it fits. So, Mr. Court Counselor Turbulent tells the two men to go back and capture the eagle or else they're fired. And also they have to, for whatever reason, they have to get the eagle to step into their trap willingly. Otherwise, he'll escape. I, I don't know exactly how that works, but whatever. After a little bit, they go back to Dubby and they do get him to go along with them. And how do they do that? Well, they, they just tell Dubby that Emma was lying. Yeah, em Emma was lying when she said she was going to visit her aunt. She actually ran away from home. And Dubby is, like, so upset and betrayed by this that he goes with the two men into their car. And I, I, I guess that was supposed to be a big betrayal, but they, it's not much of a betrayal. This is why we have second drafts, guys. So Pospisil and Washlapsky take Dubby to a really big old palace filled with Habsburg artifacts. Things always get complicated when people start asking questions about history, because that automatically makes them question the present. And we can't have that. Bad for the balance. Pospisil shook his head. So history has to be re-explained, reimagined, covered in lovely dust. Washlapsky beamed. Okay, I'm playing the clip now. I know writers who use subtext, and they're all cowards. And they just come right out and tell Dubby that, yeah, there are other eagles like you, and they all escaped, but we'll catch them one day, and then they make it clear that they're going to kill Dubby and then stuff him and put him on display as an artifact in a museum somewhere. And meanwhile, Emma is following them and decides to help. Now, there's a nearby giant golden statue of a double-headed eagle, and Emma asks it for help. And it turns out the statue is alive. His name is Cree. By the way, spelled like this? Okay. Uh, kind of an odd name, but he's alive and he decides to help, so Emma climbs on his back and he flies through a giant window, which scares the shit out of Pospisil and Washlapsky, and then he just tells them, hey, you two, leave, and they, they run away. And that's the last we see of them. <laughs> and then the eagle explains to Dubby that, yes, actually, you are very special, because you see, every Habsburg emperor owned a double-headed eagle, a real double-headed eagle, and they were looked on as advisors to the Habsburg family, uh, because one head looks to the future and one looks to the past, and to be an effective leader, one has to be able to do both, which is very specific and, I assume, true symbolism regarding the double-headed eagle standard. So Cree flies Dubby over to Castle Habsburg, which is in Switzerland, and that is a real castle that the Habsburg family is named after. And Dubby learns to fly and decides that one day his family will be needed and they'll take their rightful place. And then that's it. That's, that's the book. Yeah, it's, it's a very short little book. It's a, a little over 100 pages and it's also double-spaced and a bunch of pages are illustrations. So it's a very, very short book. And it's not even that weird unless, again, you understand the symbolism here. Edward Habsburg is not a great writer. There's not much here in the way of character or plot or even world building really like there there's a beginning and there's a climax and then that's that's it you know there's no real inciting incident which kicks off the story there's no real resolution after the climax it's just yeah dubby survived and i guess everything is going to be okay from now on uh the middle is largely just exposition and it, actually it turns out that edward habsburg is a really big fan of the phantom menace so maybe we just shouldn't take writing advice from him but that's not what makes this book funny. What makes it funny is how much of a naked personal fantasy this really is. You know, because Dubby, the Habsburg stand-in, has to go wait until people decide that he should come back and, I don't know, guide the world or something. It's, it's not made very clear <laughs> what he's actually supposed to do. But Edward, he clearly has some repressed feelings. And if you don't believe me, just look at the villains. We have Mr. Pospisil, which is very obviously a Czech name, and Mr. Washlapsky, very obviously a Polish name. I wonder if that represents something. Surely it has nothing to do with the Czech and Polish nationalist movements that rebelled and helped cause the collapse of Austria-Hungary back in 1918, which permanently removed the Habsburgs from power. Like, surely Edward doesn't harbor any sort of resentment over that. Do you want to know how I even found out that this book exists in the first place? I found out because just this May, not that long ago, there was a Habsburg fan convention. A bunch of people gathered together to watch some of the descendants of the family give speeches and then buy some of their merchandise. And you're thinking, okay, 
descendants of a European royal dynasty? Like, wh where would they hold this fan convention? Like, is it Vienna? Or Prague? Or Budapest? Or maybe Paris? No, it was in fucking Plano, Texas. <laughs> what the f <laughs> Not only that, the whole thing was organized by a realtor. A local Plano, Texas realtor. Like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck here? Like, wh what is going on? Like, how washed up does a royal family have to be to beg for attention and money from a group of a few hundred people who unironically believe in the divine right of kings? You know, they used to rule half the world, and now they are whatever it is they are now. <laughs> like, it used to be that when a Habsburg sneezed, the world trembled, and now they could all be wiped out at once, and we likely wouldn't even hear about it. Because I want to reiterate, they're still somewhat famous, and they are still wealthy from what I can tell, but they're no longer powerful. That's just not a thing that they have anymore. Very few people care about them anymore. And I have to admit, it must be weird to look back and see the power that your ancestors wielded and think, wow, that, that could have been me. You know, that, that must be weird. I do sympathize with that. And instead, they are reduced to living out their fantasies of being important via children's picture books. <laughs> Some people say that it's stupid to psychoanalyze authors based on their books, and in most cases I agree, but there are exceptions to that rule. And this is one of those exceptions. And with all that in mind, th this book, W the Double-Headed Eagle, is hilarious. Like, I don't really have anything else to say. Really, this book is, this is just a strange, obscure little book that I found and felt I needed to share with everyone. You know, I don't really have the ability or inclination to do a giant deep dive into it, which maybe some people could, but I don't want to, and I, I, I just don't want to. <laughs> it's really that simple. This Sometimes that's all I have to say. It's a weird little book. I wanted to share it with the rest of you. Thank you for watching. Hello, friends. This is the part where all my patrons' names go on the screen here. Or not all of them, but my $5 and up patrons. And my $10 and up patrons are Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Ich bin Langweilig, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Mel Reeds, Michael and Katie Hake, Proscriptions of Zhuo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Vevictus, Wesley, and Zenitech89. Thanks to all of you. You're all great. If you want to get your name on here and also get early access to my videos and exclusive content and, you know, the fun kind of stuff like that, then consider donating on my Patreon page, or becoming a YouTube channel member, or if you don't feel like doing that, rate the video, comment on the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, the stuff that I'm supposed to say, I don't know. I imagine that if you like my stuff enough that you're watching all the way to this point, you're probably already subscribed and you're probably already liking this and sharing it around, <laughs> but I don't know, it's, it wouldn't hurt to tell people about that. Anyways, uh, I guess someone's still watching at this point. I'm just completely rambling right now. Goodbye.